Have you ever considered John the Baptist, the one who went before Jesus? He's an absolutely incredible character, someone we need to study and understand if we're going to see the gospel story clearly. Stay with me. I want to share with you about him. Good morning. Glad you could be with me. I want to start this week by talking about John the Baptist, a very fascinating character to begin the week with, an outspoken man, a messenger, a forerunner of our Lord Jesus Christ, sent ahead of Jesus to prepare the way, and this is exactly what he did. He carried out his work to the very T, and he was absolutely magnificent in everything. If you went to hear him preach, you heard a forthright, outspoken preacher who told it like it is. It must have been an amazing experience in Jesus' day for those Jews to go and listen to him. But there was more about that. He went ahead of Jesus and he prepared the way by preaching repentance. Let's look at the Word of God and see who exactly he was and what he said. First of all, let's see who John was. We talked a little bit about his parents before Christmas because they're tied up with the whole Christmas story. You remember Elizabeth was a cousin of Mary, Jesus' own mother, and that it's timed in the Luke's Gospel during Elizabeth's pregnancy, the timing of the coming of Jesus. For it says of Gabriel that he went to Mary in her sixth month. That was the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. Let's see what else it says. We find in the description of John's parents that it says in Luke 1 and verse 6, they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless, and they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and both were now well stricken in years. They were getting older, they didn't have a child, and in those days that was a disgrace. But one day his father who was a priest had a vision. And we mentioned this before Christmas. And in verse 11 of Luke 1 it says, There appeared unto Zechariah the angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer has been heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear a son, and thou shalt call his name John. It was all very clear. And it was quite an incredible vision. In verse 18 of that same chapter it says, The angel Gabriel said, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God, and I am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Here is John's father standing in the temple he's there by the altar of incense and he simply didn't believe that his wife was going to have a baby and for that he was dumb for the next nine months a reminder of the power of our God God was speaking through Gabriel and you cannot take the message of God lightly this was the vision his name was to be called John and his task is described we find that in verses 14 to 17 of the same chapter it says Thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at John's birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. This was the description of John, this was the description of his work, and this was his calling and task. But then we find that was a prophecy fulfilled in John, and we find this at the beginning of Mark's Gospel. You remember Mark does not have any of the Christmas stories. He simply gets into the story of Jesus Christ. And we find in Mark 1, and the beginning there, that it says in verse 3, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness, and preach the baptism of repentance. This is John the Baptist, and he was fulfilling prophecy. And his preaching was quite incredible, just as his whole profession was. Verse 4, John did baptize in the wilderness, and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. 
it was very clear speaking. And it's fascinating, you know, not too many of us in our churches today hear repentance preached. And yet when I look in the Bible, especially in the New Testament stories, I find that repentance just runs through the New Testament like a thread. John the Baptist preached repentance. Jesus preached repentance. The New Testament church preached repentance. And somehow we've lost it over the years. And yet it's absolutely vital. If you and I have sinned, we can go nowhere until we've gone to the Lord our God, confessed our sins, and repented. What does that mean? Well, first of all, we've got to be sorry for what we've done wrong. How do we know if we're sorry? First of all, by not doing it again. If you go straight out and do the deliberate sin, it's very unlikely that you were ever repentant. It's much more likely that you were playing games with words. You have to repent if you're going to come to the Lord our God. And then we find that as he went on, he did still more. Verse 7 tells us, And preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I, the latchet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to stoop down and unloose. He knew that he was there for a purpose, and he was there to come before our Lord Jesus Christ, and this is exactly what he did. He made a prophecy, and it was fulfilled completely. But his preaching was incredible. Right down the line, exactly what he wanted to say, he called a spade a spade. And if you went to listen to John the Baptist, you didn't go for any sermon tickler. But then we find a description of John, his appearance, his menu, and I don't find either of them very great. Mark 1 verse 6, And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey. Here was this man who lived in the desert. We think he might even have joined the group called the Essenes. And there down by the Dead Sea, he ate strangely wasn't it honey what on earth did he do locusts and wild honey what a menu how would you feel about that but not only so if you think of the way he was dressed he was dressed in camel's hair he must have looked a wild man i have a feeling and i can't prove this to you that he wouldn't have got into many of our churches because he certainly wasn't properly dressed and yet here he was commissioned by god sent by god given a particular work to do, and he did it magnificently. But a wild character, living in a wild place. And what was the preaching that he gave? Well, the key of it was repentance. We found that in verse 4. He baptized people for the repentance and the remission of sins. When they declared they were sorry, they were baptized in the river Jordan. But also, there's another step. We find this in verse 8 of the same chapter. He says, and he's speaking of Jesus, I indeed have baptized you with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I find that Jesus says the same thing. At the beginning of the letter to Acts, chapter 1 and verse 8 and verse 7, he says this, and this is Jesus speaking, For John the Baptist truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days hence. This fascinates me. Both John and Jesus say precisely the same thing. They both said that he's baptizing in water, but we shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you something. If you're a Christian believer listening to my voice, have you had that experience of being baptized with the Holy Spirit? It seems very evident in the New Testament that there are two happenings. One is the baptism in water, one is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The other thing I find, very obviously, no one was baptized in water after Jesus had died and risen again in the New Testament church unless they believed. It was because of their belief that they were baptized. But notice it was not just in water. It was also baptism of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? Well, very simply, the word baptize means to immerse. In actual fact, when a Greek ship sank, it had been baptizoed. Therefore, when we are baptized, we are covered, we are filled, it just flows all around us, and this is true of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit baptizes, He fills us. He flows over us. He flows around us. He flows through us. 
we are totally immersed in God's Spirit. And there isn't one of you listening to my voice who doesn't need that experience. Well, you say, Richard, how do I get it? I think very simply. You simply go to the Lord your God and you ask Him for it. And you just surrender yourself to Him. When you give everything to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're then open to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. And it's a very real experience. You may not know it at the time. You may not have flashing lights. But I tell you this, that over the following months, you'll begin to see the fruits of the Spirit in your life. And it will become very real to you. That's the baptism. And that's what each one of us needs to live, the life that the Lord has laid down in the New Testament. I find something else about John. Jesus talked about John in Luke chapter 7 and verse 24. And the Bible says, and this is Jesus speaking, when the messengers of John were departed, Jesus began to speak concerning John. And he said, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. But what went ye out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled live in king's courts. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say unto you, much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it's written. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Jesus says this man was sent, and he prepared the way for him. He challenged the people to think about John's life. But more than that, he pointed out John's mission. And then he spoke of John in a most incredible way in verse 28. He says, For I, I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. What a statement from our Lord Jesus Christ. When you think about John, when you see John, you find one who Jesus says, there's never been anyone greater born of women than John. He was outspoken, he was rough and ready, and he must have been an absolute sight for anyone to see. But friend, when he preached, when he spoke, he brought the message of the Lord our God. He did it clearly, he did it deliberately, and he did the task that he was given to do. When I was ordained, the dean of our college spoke about John the Baptist. And he said to me one of these things. I shall never forget it for the rest of my life. He said, Richard, John the Baptist pointed people away from himself to Jesus. He was a signpost. And that's the one thing I want to be, and I think that's what each one of us should be. Always pointing away from ourselves, always pointing to our Lord Jesus Christ. For that's why John came, and that's why you and I are here. It's not what people see of us. It's what they see of Jesus in us that counts for everyone every day.